welcome to this month's edition of Inside the World of TCR, our monthly trip around the TCR universe. In episode 3 we'll bring you up to date with WTCR, TCR Europe and TCR Asia. Plus the national TCR series in Italy, the UK, Scandinavia and the USA. We'll also have a one-to-one -one interview with Dusan Borkovic. Stay with us. The WTCR went to the Slovakia ring for the sixth event of the season. In race one, Gabriele Tarquini in his Hyundai made a poor start from pole and dropped behind Aurelien Comte, Pepe Oriola and Jean-Carl Vernet. But Comte's lead didn't last for long. Two laps into the race and Pepe Oriola was now leading, while Vernet grabbed second place from Comte with this move. So the first WTCR victory for Pepe Oriola and Cupra. Jean Calvenet and Gabriele Tarquini completed the podium, ahead of Aurelien Comte and an impressive Fabrizio Giovanardi, who scored the first points for himself and the Alfa Romeo Giulietta. It was a lights to flag victory for Tarquini in the second race, round 17 of the championship, and the fourth win for the Italian driver so far this season. Unlike in race one, Tarquini made a far better start when the lights went out and led pole sitter Nage into turn one. The young Hungarian was then able to keep Muller at bay to retain second place. Race one winner Pepe Oriola claimed another brilliant result, finishing fourth a few inches ahead of Benjamin Lesen, Jean Filippi, and Norbert Mikulic, who recovered from tenth on the reverse grid. At the start of round 18 of the championship, the third race of the weekend, Norbert Mikulic made good use of pole and led from Aurelien Comte and Ivan Muller. The latter overtook Comte for second, while Frederick Vavish moved up to fourth on the outside line. During the first lap, there was a huge pileup caused by Gabriele Tarquini, who hit Benjamin Lesen and triggered a chain reaction that involved another eight drivers, Vernet, Shedden, Benani, Nage, Filippi, Guerreri and Berton. During the safety car period, Ivan Muller was also eliminated, as he lost a front wheel and went straight off into the gravel. Ten laps into the race and this contact between Rob Huff and Jan Erlache happened. It earned a drive-through penalty for the Brit. And a trip into the pits for the Frenchman, who'd end the race in 15. The last part of the race was livened up by a terrific scrap for third between Ted Björk in a Hyundai and Frederick Vervish's Audi. The 2017 WTCC champion tried everything he could on a circuit which offers a number of opportunities to overtake, but the Belgian driver put in a great defensive drive, resisted the Swedes attacks and beat him to the line by 39 thousandths of a second to finish on the podium. And so, the first WTCR win for Norbert Mikulic. Comte finished second and Vervish completed the podium. I really wanted this win and I gave it everything from, from the first moment. It's for all the people who, who have helped me uh, to come this far. Of course, it's a race win, but it's uh, maybe the most important one of my career because uh, I was struggling so far this season and I really hope that this is the turning point for me. Despite crashing out of the last race, Tarquini is the new leader of the championship with Muller now second, three points behind. Mikulic moves up to third. After Paul Ricard, Zandvoort and Spa, TCR Europe visited another iconic venue, the Hungaro Ring, for round seven and eight. Starting for the first time from pole, championship leader Mikel Adkona followed a perfect strategy in Q2 on a drying track. Third on the grid, Josh Files in the Honda Civic had a better start than his teammate Attila Tashi and managed to just about overtake Mikel Athkona until a slight contact suggested the Brit should perhaps take a more careful approach to turn one. Further back, Slovak driver Martin Reber in a Volkswagen Golf spun after being squeezed into a sandwich between Piro and Davidovsky. In front, Files managed to overtake Athkona for the lead going into turn two.
three laps into the race and Mikel Alkanar challenged Files for the lead in the last corner, but this contact with the Brit cost him several places. That was the perfect opportunity for Dusan Borkovic, who was running fourth at the time. While Files lost some speed on the straight, the Serbian overtook first Attila Tashi for second and then braked very aggressively into turn one, arriving side by side with Files. By turn two, the Serbian was the new leader of the race. But the misadventures for Files weren't over yet, and on lap four he had to retire because of a puncture a third consecutive DNF for the English driver. Seven laps into the race and this happened between Brichet and Tashi. The young Hungarian driver finished his race in the gravel and the safety car was deployed while the Honda was recovered. On lap 11, while the leaders were comfortably controlling the situation, Bar, Athkonar and Kamini arrived side by side into turn one, battling for P4. There was contact between the three, with Bar suffering more than the others, but at least all were able to continue. This was the third win of the season for Dusan Borkovic, while second was the best ever result for Stian Paulsen. Danny Naj was third in front of Adkona, Richard and Muller. For Team Target and Dusan Borkovic, it was time for celebration. <laughs> Starting from pole position in race two, the eighth round of the championship, Francisco Mora achieved a good start and took the inside line, the most favourable into turn one. But a little kiss with Julien Brichet running second allowed his compatriot Francisco Abreu's Peugeot to get closer. And into turn two, after a gentle bumper-to-bumper -bumper touch, Abreu took the lead from Mora. Three laps into the race and Borkovic was challenging Files for P5 very hard, probably too hard, and this contact between the two brought the Serbians' race to an early end. A second DNF of the season and a three-position grid penalty for the next race. Four laps in and with this clean manoeuvre on the inside line into turn one, the Hungarian Danny Naj snatches third from Julien Brichet. One lap later, Attila Tashi also overtakes Julien Brichet, who then lost an additional position after Josh Files pushed him from behind. A move which was also penalised by the stewards with a three-place grid penalty for the next race. On lap six, this was how Francisco Mora retook the lead from Francisco Abreu. One lap later, Abreu went very wide in the twisty section of the track, opening the door to Danny Nage, who took third. Eight laps into the race, and Josh Files took fourth from his teammate Attila Tashi at turn two. One lap later, and for Files, it was time to challenge for third. Hard breaking into turn one. A little kiss at the exit of the corner. And then the overtake into turn two. Nothing Abreu could do. Even if he wasn't fighting for the top positions, the drive-through penalty Athkona had to serve because of track limits could play a crucial role in such a tight championship. 11 laps in and Attila Tashi managed to overtake Abreu for fourth, which would be the final position at the end of the race for the young Hungarian driver. Another disappointing weekend. So, the first win of the season for Francisco Mora, in front of Naj and Files, who was back on the podium after his win in race two at Zandvoort. For the Mira team, it was a 1-2, no better way to celebrate their home event. Yeah, but it's
With Avkana and Borkovic still separated by one point and both not scoring in the second race, the others have reduced the gaps. The battle for the title is still wide open. Dusan Borkovic has very quickly become one of the most iconic drivers in touring cars. His driving style is very aggressive, but he's also a very open person. Talking to him is easy for fans and journalists alike. We spent some time with him and first asked why he likes racing. Nobody can explain that. That's the real, that's the passion. That's something you cannot describe with the words. So when I was one year old, I knew, I knew that I want to be a, a driver. When you're, when you're sitting and you have the uh, night before the race, thinking of what can happen wrong, uh, what you can do, the, the feeling of the, of, the, of the fuel, of the rubber, of the tires. It is impossible to, to have that in the... I go to play tennis. I am good friends with uh, Novak Djokovic also. But when I go to play tennis, I have like 50 heart rate, maybe. I don't have any... But when you are sitting, when you sit in the car, you need to have... You know that something can happen. Can, can, can. Of course, all of us are, are brave and want to be, maybe go to the dead, but uh, you have something inside of your heart which you cannot describe. The height of Dusan Borkovic is obviously the first thing that catches your attention when you meet him for the first time. How difficult is it then to drive a racing car when you are 2.07 meters tall? In the past I had some problems uh, with some team, but that was the bad team. They didn't make everything for me. Uh, but from that moment, I never had any, any issues because the, every team is, is trying to make everything the best for, for my legs, for my arms, because for my head to, to be safe for me and that I can be also fast, that I have good movements and everything. So now in, in Hyundai is, 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 is uh, perfect. I think that I, now I'm so used to drive like that, that uh, if I'm smaller, I would not be able to drive. Now is, everything is perfect. I'm quite fit, I'm quite fast, and uh, I have good motoric skills also. Last year, Dusan drove an Alfa Romeo Giulietta in the TCR International Series and finished eighth in the Drivers' Championship, but grabbed some very good results along the way. Last season was, was quite okay. The private car with the private people who are really, really put so much energy in that car to make the really good car. In Bahrain, I won with Alfa, was, the, was something also special. I won uh, every, every time when you're in the top, it's, it's something special. I, I won the Salzburg Ring also, and in Thailand, I was from P13. I had some problems with, uh, with on, on quali. I finished P2. Currently second in TCR Europe, Borkovic started the season by achieving the best weekend of his career at Paul Ricard, setting pole, winning race one, and then race two. But the Serbian keeps a special souvenir of that moment for a different reason. Paul Ricard was something special for me because in that moment I knew uh, that I was going to be a father. But nobody else known, so uh, I, I drove for my for my baby, for my for my uh, daughter. So she's gonna be a daughter, and also I'm driving now whole season. And this race was was uh, I drove for, for for her. So good luck to the driver and future dad. TCR Asia and TCR Thailand went to Bangsen, not far from Pattaya in Thailand, for rounds five and six, where a street circuit's been laid out. German Luca Engstler, who'd taken a superb pole with his Liquid Molly t to prepared Volkswagen Golf GTI, had a relatively poor start, with Lo Shei Ho's maximum racing Honda Civic stealing the lead from him at turn one. But the lead didn't last for long, and after three laps and this move, Luca Engstler began to control the race from the front. Five laps into the race and championship contender Mitchell Che lost control of his golf, crashing into the barriers. The safety car was deployed while the car was recovered. But the bad news didn't finish there for the Liqui Moly team. At the restart, Engstler headed straight for the pits to serve a drive-through for a jump start. This took Lo Shei Ho by surprise, and the Hong Kong driver ran wide, dropping to fourth behind Pata Parol, Li Watana Varagul, and Davi. The leading trio then headed for the checkered flag with no further surprises, with the elegant racing duo of Alex Yu and Kelvin Wong fourth and fifth overall, respectively. 
At the start of the second race, pole sitter Kelvin Wong in his elegant racing prepared set. Leon stalled and created chaos, but thankfully there were no incidents. Alex Liu then took the lead. Later, this was the forceful way Mitchell Che took the lead from Alex Liu, and Liu's race was over. Engsler was putting pressure on his colleague Che until he outbraked himself and crashed out of the race on lap four. On the following lap, Lo Shei Ho's fierce attacks on the leader succeeded, and the Hong Kong driver began to pull away at an impressive pace, leaving Che and Moran fighting for second. Lo Shei Ho claimed his maiden victory from Moran and Che. De v was classified fourth, and so took victory in TCR Thailand. In the TCR Asia standings, Che retakes the lead with 100 points, but Lo Shei Ho is a close second. Vong Prai retains the lead in TCR Thailand. Kazan hosted round seven and eight of TCR Russia. At the start of race one, Alexei Dudukalo's Audi sprinted from pole ahead of Bragin and Minakmetov, while Anton Badoev, who was second on the grid, lost several places. The race then became mostly processional until the safety car was deployed on lap 10 to recover Magomed Dagiev's Seat Leon that was stranded in the gravel. Racing resumed only for the last lap with a closed up field. Dudukalo resisted Bragin's final assault and won by 0.179 of a second, with Minakmatov a close third and the Lada duo of Shishenin and Ladijin in fourth and fifth. In the second race, Anton Badoev used his pole position well and kept the lead, while behind him race one winner Alexei Dudukalo and Mikhail Grachov collided and then rejoined at the back of the field. On lap four, Ladijin took the lead from Badoev, who was then also passed by Bragin. Ladijin maintained his position until the chequered flag. Bragin finished second and Badoev third. So, Ladijin reduces his gap from Bragin in the standings to eight points. Vladimir Shashenin lies third, 29 points off the leader, and five ahead of Ivan Lukashevich. TCR UK went to Castle Coombe for rounds seven and eight, and for once it wasn't Dan Lloyd on pole. The championship leader also made a poor start and had dropped to fifth as the cars headed towards turn one at Quarry Corner. Race leader Ollie Taylor made it safely through Quarry, but there was contact between Jessica Beckman and Finley Crocker, which also led to Stuart Lyons retiring with a broken radiator. Once the safety car had been withdrawn, Lloyd could concentrate on catching Taylor. Here's Lloyd passing his teammate Andreas Beckman for second place, with fourth place Lewis Kent kicking up dust as he cut the exit to the chicane. On the final lap, Lloyd lunged up the inside of Taylor at Quarry and took the lead, but the incident drew the attention of the clerk of the course. Despite the fact that Lloyd crossed the finish line in first place and the celebrations of the West Coast Racing Team, the top two positions were later reversed and Lloyd also received a penalty for the contact. Race two, round eight of the championship, then saw Lloyd start from pole and was immediately challenged by the Cooper of Carl Swift. The pair headed towards Quarry side by side, but Lloyd had the inside line for the corner. While Lloyd was building a comfortable lead, Ollie Taylor was determined to once again take the fight to the Volkswagen driver. This is Taylor passing Lewis Kent for third place, which soon became second after this brave move around the outside of Carl Swift, heading up the rise towards Quarry. In the race's closing stages, a dramatic contact between Jessica Beckman and Stuart Lyon saw both cars impact the barriers hard, and so the safety car once again was deployed, which meant Lloyd's lead over Taylor had been slashed. Lloyd, though, managed the restart well, and so took his seventh win of the season. Taylor was second, and a delighted Carl Swift scored his first podium finish of the season. Because of the 15-point penalty, Lloyd's lead over Taylor is now 84 points, with Andreas and Jessica Beckman third and fourth. Six more rounds remain. For rounds seven and eight, TCR Italy went to the beautiful Mugello circuit in Tuscany, with 24 cars on the grid. 
At the start of race one, pole sitter Nicola Baldan's Hyundai was overtaken by Eric Scalvini in another Hyundai, after starting second and by Luigi Ferrara in an Alfa Romeo Giulietta, who'd started fourth. The Alfa Romeo showed superb pace and an impressive top speed. After a few laps, Ferrara took the lead from Scalvini with this move into turn one. On lap four, Ferrara also set the fastest lap of the race. One lap later, and again into turn one, first Salvatore Tavano and then Nicola Baldan both overtook Scalvini for second and third respectively. After building a useful lead, the V-action racing Alfa Romeo of Luigi Ferrara began to suffer brake problems and started to drop down the order. This was when Salvatore Tavano in a Cupra took the lead. And this was the moment when Nicola Baldan overtook Ferrara for second. Ferrara would go on to finish the race last in 22nd position. The battle for the lead between Tavano and Baldan went on throughout the race until the chequered flag, when only 43 thousandths separated the two. For Tavano, it was his maiden win in TCR Italy. Scalvini was classified third, ahead of Marco Pellegrini and Matteo Greco, who won the DSG trophy category. In the second race, pole sitter Federico Paulino in a Hyundai managed to keep his lead into turn one over Eduardo Capello's Alfa Romeo Giulietta. On the opening lap, there was contact between Matteo Greco's Cupra and the Honda of Cesar Mercado. Running immediately behind the pair, Eric Scalvini took to the gravel to avoid the crash. The safety car was deployed while the Honda was recovered. At the restart, Eduardo Capello, in only his second appearance in TCR Italy, overtook Paulino for first, and he would comfortably keep the lead right until the end. One lap later and some typical TCR action. Four cars side by side, with Greco and Baldan overtaking Paulino for second and third respectively. Six laps into the race, and with this move, Nicola Baldan managed to overtake Matteo Greco for second. On that same lap, just a few turns later, Salvatore Tavano also overtook Greco, who moved down to fourth. And that was the last change in the race affecting the leading positions. So, on only his second appearance in TCR Italy, Eduardo Capello achieved his maiden win, beating the reigning champion Nicola Baldan. Alfa Romeo driver Luigi Ferrara finished out of the points and lost the lead in the championship to Salvatore Tavano, who now has an eight and a half point lead. Greco is third and Baldan fourth. TCR Scandinavia went to Falkenberry in Sweden for rounds five and six. Robert Dahlgren, driving a PWR racing Cupra, took victory in the first race after holding off a determined late charge from the Volkswagen Golf GTI of Johan Christoffersen to win by 0.371 of a second. Dahlgren's teammate Daniel Hagloff finished third. <laughs> Matthias Anderson then took a remarkable victory in race two, securing what was virtually a lights to flag win by just 0.141 of a second over Frederick Ekblom. Pole sitter Tobias Brink finished third. Dahlgren has now extended his lead in the Drivers' Championship to 31 points. Vernerson is in second place, with Christofferson dropping to third, a further two points behind. <laughs> Round 7 and 8 of the Pirelli World Challenge took place at Portland International Raceway. In the first race, pole sitter Ryan Eversley managed the rolling start to perfection and led the Hyundais of Mark Wilkins and Michael Lewis into Turn 1. On lap 29, and with only around three minutes remaining, the leaders encountered back markers. Eversley was held up, and Wilkins passed for the lead. One lap later, Lewis also passed the Honda for second place. And despite Eversley struggling with what appeared to be a lack of grip on the final lap, he held Cooper at bay to finish third. The top four drivers separated by just three and a half seconds. So it was a one-two for Hyundai, with Wilkins in front of Lewis. Behind the quartet, the Audi of Matt Fasnacht finished fifth, ahead of Michael Hertzin's Volkswagen. Mm -hmm. 
race two didn't start as race one finished for Wilkins, who stopped on the formation lap with a fuel pressure problem. At the start, Eversley took the lead from Lewis and Cooper. Despite being under pressure from Michael Lewis throughout the race, Eversley took the win. Newcomer Michael Cooper achieved his first podium result by finishing third. The golfs of Hertzin, Vincent and Filippi were classified fourth, fifth and sixth. Eversley's third victory of the season, along with Wilkins' withdrawal, means that the Honda driver has stretched his leading margin in the standings to 17 points over Lewis, while Wilkins dropped a third, 29 points behind. TCR Racing doesn't stop for the summer, and so we'll be back with a roundup of the action next month. For now, though, goodbye.